Greetings and salutations to all you folks out there. I'm Brink and you're listening to the Voice of Insanity, bringing you an opinion about a game. Today we're going to be talking about Ironclads 2, American Civil War. This was put out by Totem Games, released just a couple of days ago on Steam. We're going to go ahead and give you the rundown on it and uh, see where the gameplay takes us. If you just want to skip back to the summary and my opinion on the game, go ahead and click the link in the top right corner. Otherwise, stick around and we'll show you what this game has to offer. Right off the bat, I hate to say a bunch of negative things in a row right at the beginning of a video, but I cannot help it in this case because there are some serious, serious issues with getting started on this game. Um, obviously, if you've played other games in the Ironclad series, you might be okay because the gameplay element might be a little bit familiar, but for anybody picking up this title fresh, not having played previous games, there is no tutorial. There are no settings to allow you to see what the hotkeys are, what the controls are, and you can't change any of the controls. Absolutely bare bones as far as that's concerned. And then there is no documentation. There's nothing anywhere to click or to lead you to a readme, a game manual, anything like that. So I jumped straight into this game assuming that, hey, they'll probably have something right at the beginning of the match that will let me know what the hell's going on so I can actually play this game. I was sadly mistaken. We get a, a Union Forever screen, a little bit of a backdrop for the American Civil War. Your victory conditions, basically, you have to keep control of as many harbors as you can at the end of 48 months, 48 turns, so that is the extent of the campaign, and that's that. So we're going to go ahead and start a game, and immediately you'll recognize that uh, there is some zoom control. There is no 360 view change support. It is strictly up and down, which is not necessarily terrible, but there's no panning, nothing the only control that I could find, I literally went through and pressed every key on the keyboard to try to figure out what everything did because there's no documentation. And basically got down to uh, F4 and that removes the flags and that is a completely useless and trivial bit and that's it. You have to pan around by actually bumping the edges of the screen which is kind of clunky when you're trying to do things quickly. And then as far as the things on the maps go, uh, yeah, you can see the ships which kind of sort of have halfway decent models I guess but not great texturing and really nothing special especially when you're considering the cost of this game which we'll get to in the summary um, but yeah this is exactly what's going to be available in the tactical combat situation you can see these guys are horribly malformed probably some form of uh, deadly disease common at the time and you can zoom right through the ships way down into oblivion so not very mechanically sound either then you get to try to play you get to where you're trying to actually play the game and you're in here you've got tons of stuff that are labeled with basic tool tips that don't really give you a whole lot of information as far as statistical uh probability for hits and that kind of thing and then whatever information they do give you is horribly broken up like you have ships you can't see the ship cost, and depending on how you mouse over it, the tooltip sometimes goes up inside the uh, top section of the UI, and you can't even read the upper lines on there. But then you can click the ship, point cursor to shipyard to get cost info. So instead of actually printing, instead of actually showing the cost of the ship, you have to mouse over here, and there's your. Uh, build time and build cost, which we can't afford anything right now. So overall, information is just presented in a really clunky manner, and it's not very easy to tell what's going on and what you're supposed to do. So as I was looking around this game, we're talking about 30 minutes of time invested here before I've even played any. Um, I finally found on the Steam page a game manual. So it's not referenced anywhere in the game. There's no links to it. There's no, hey, you can look at the game manual for more information, and that would that would tip you off that you need to go hunt for a game manual. There is a manual that has all the hotkeys listed, all the ship statistics listed, uh, everything that you need to know about the finer points of moving your units around on the map, all of that stuff. It would be an incredibly useful tool if it was in the game. I mean, you don't even need a tutorial for a turn-based strategy game. You just need the freaking information to be able to play it. 
And so after I read that, I was able to kind of sort of get in here and see what was going on. So let's see here. We can very carefully, there's about a five pixel wide strip that you can click to uh, actually select a ship. And then we're going to move him over there. And then we're going to, let's see, try to get that ship as well and move him over here. All right. So now we have four or five ships, five ships in this blockade. And the goal of this game is to blockade the harbors to block merchant ships entering so that you can restrict the economy of your opponent. And then eventually you're going to want to move your ships from the blockade in to actually capture the harbor, which you can do as well with, um, with infantry units if you move them across the map. I'm not going to touch too much on that, but uh, you you are able to do that. In the harbor, you have fortifications, coastal batteries, that kind of thing. And then we do have a couple of ships in here, which are apparently lying in wait for me to come and kill them. So let's go ahead and end the turn, see what happens here. I'm going to end, and there we go. We have a combat situation, three ships on five. We have manual battle and auto battle. Let's just go for auto battle because we're concerned with time. And there is our combat taking place. We can get rid of the maps and uh, take a closer look at the ships. Oh, wait. No, I can't because we have lost the ability to pan the viewfinder. Nope. Nope. So we're just going to stare up close and personal at this little section of sea there. <laughs> And you can see, even in windowed mode, it was starting to frame rate drop. And that is another thing that I need to talk about because the the optimization in this game is utterly atrocious. When I had it full screen, I could not record what was going on because it was dropping to like nine frames a second with either one of the programs that I try to use to record. So maybe it's something with my rig. I don't know. It it would not cooperate. So then I swap over to the windowed mode to try to see if that alleviates the problem. And instead, I find out that the window that this game is in cannot be resized or dragged around. It just gets planted on your screen wherever it very well pleases, which in my case was bridging my two monitors half and half, which... I can't record on. So I ended up having to go through the resolutions until I found one that put it entirely on one monitor so that I could record it. And that turned out to be 720p, which is why the resolution is crap. Not that it looks any better when it's in 1080p, but it is noticeably more pixelated in the 720p form. So we had our automatic battle there. We've got pretty good grasp on what all is going on here. Obviously, there is an underlying level of... Um, statistical probability and such things there is the decent underpinnings of a reasonably good turn-based strategy game but as i'm showing you here the ui fights against you every single step of the way and it appears that they have done everything that they possibly can to hinder you from trying to enjoy the actual game that lies underneath all of this stuff i'm gonna go ahead and uh let's uh let's move a couple of these ships over here we're gonna go over there with that one and over there with that one. We're just going to get massively overwhelming force. Bam. Eight ships in eight slots. Let's go ahead and end the turn. And there are now no more ships. So we don't have to worry about that. We can flip through here. I think we'll have enough income after this turn to actually be able to build a ship. So I can show you that. And then in another turn, we'll have a couple of ships that come out for us. And they have completed a warship. All right. So we're awaiting orders. Let's go ahead and go over here. We can build a ship. We got 495,000 coin, which I think, nope, 500,000. So we're going to build that one. Bam. So now we've got uh, one turn left before we get access to those two ships and four turns before we get access to that one. Um, I think that will wrap us up for this turn. Let's go ahead and quit and see if we actually get a combat situation, which we do not. I will force a combat situation in the next turn so that I can actually show you the last piece of the puzzle that I wanted to display. All right. Are we going to get more ships coming out? Yes, more warships. Hallelujah, we may actually have a battle on our hands. 
Ah, now we have these ships. So we can select these and head on over that way, which I think I can click. There we go. And click. It's so hard to get around. Okay, there we go. We're good. We're good. We're going to end the turn and get a combat situation. Oh, good lord, we are outmatched atrociously. Let's go ahead and manual battle because this will surely be exciting. Uh, right. Okay, so as far as controls go in here, we do actually have 3D panning. We have uh, basic controls. We have full speed, uh, port and starboard, not necessarily in that order. Rudder positioning, which is ridiculously laggy and stuck. That one, yeah, anywhere from one to four clicks to actually shift from one rudder position to the other. And then you actually lose your cursor sometimes. So none of this is very well put together. We can switch uh, round shot, explosive shot, and armor piercing. And we're just going to stay on full speed ahead. And we're going to double the speed because everything moves really, really slowly. So we've got our ships here. We've got two ships. Beautiful, beautiful ships. And we can click on the back one in the column, but we can't control it because you can only control the first ship in the column. I don't know why that decision was made because if I'm going to be playing a strategy game where there's a real-time element involved... I want to actually be able to control my ships. That way I could move them on separate sides and pincer a ship in the middle. I can do creative things with my ship positioning, but you know what? Nope. We're just going to control the first ship and the other one is going to basically be tied off to my rear end and follow me around everywhere. So this is incredibly slow paced and once you enter manual combat mode, you cannot exit. You cannot exit it. Um, you can run for the edge of the map, which could potentially take 10 minutes or longer. I don't actually know because I attempted it at one point, and it took so long that I just gave up and quit. Um, probably seven minutes or so, and I didn't reach the edge. Ooh, we're going to ram someone. Nope. <laughs> nope. We just succeeded in damaging ourselves. So basically, either you die or they die, or... You hit the edge of the map. And that's the only way to end this combat situation. There we go. Critical damage. He's going to run away. Now we have control of the second ship. And we're just going to continue to lollygag around and do what we can. Um, yeah. So this is the supposed real-time strategy game elements. And our crew is just still standing around the decks doing absolutely nothing. And that's pretty much the summation of this game. All of this is what you get. And if you can overcome the difficulties in actually getting to the information, this is what you're left with. I'm going to go ahead and quit to menu because I think that is everything I need to show on this game and we're going to go ahead with the summary and conclusion. So, as far as this game goes, this is probably one of the worst implementations of real-time, or well, actually both, turn-based strategy and real-time strategy that I've seen in recent memory. And to cap it all off, they are asking 20 freaking dollars for this game. I got it on sale for 17 bucks and it was the most atrocious waste of money that I have ever put funding towards. Uh, once you top the $15 mark, I'm expecting at least halfway decent 3D models and animations of which there are none. I mean, there's <laughs> there's no animations. Um, the guys stand still on the, on the ships. When you move your units around, they just kind of teleport from one place to another. And the real-time battle element is so lethargic that by the time anything actually happens, you probably completely lost interest. There's no reason to undergo the, the real-time element because the auto battle get it's done, gets it done so much quicker and the RNG is so strong in the manual mode that you aren't going to gain anything in a battle by trying to control the ships yourself. Overall, this game is just a total wash. You're not going to be able to pick it up easily because there's no tutorial, no readme, unless you go digging for information. And then if you do succeed in deciphering the game mechanics, there's nothing there to keep you. I mean, take away the real-time combat element and you've got yourself a, you know, 3 or $4 turn-based strategy game that might be halfway decent. But when they try to throw in all of the other elements and make things bigger than they actually are, they end up just crapping all over the whole concept. And it, in my opinion, it is a complete, total, abysmal failure. Now, 
That being said, there are some people that actually give it positive reviews and apparently enjoy playing this game. I would love to hear from you guys in the comments. If you have bought this game and you enjoy playing it, I want to know why. Because I don't understand. I really don't. Uh, it is... It is an abusive relationship, and I'll just leave it at that. All right, guys, that is my opinion. I'm sticking to it. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please leave a comment if you like to discuss this game with me. And, uh, yeah, I think that's it. I will see you guys in the next one.